So you followed a pattern or you took a class or a workshop, you did a lot of work and now you have your beautiful quilt top done. How do you finish that into a quilt? Today, I'm gonna to share five different ways of how to finish that into a quilt and help you decide which one is the best for your situation. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So a lot of patterns have instructions for a quilt top and then at the end it just says, and then quilt it and bind it and you're done. And for some people, that can be really overwhelming because it doesn't give you instructions on how to do the quilting. And the quilting is the stitching or whatever you have that holds the layers of the quilt together. It holds the piece part, the batting, and the backing. And the reason why a lot of patterns don't include detailed instructions for that is because there are so many options. And what you decide will determine on the amount of time you have, the amount of money you have, and the amount of skill that you have. And so for each project, you might want to use a different option. So there are five main options for finishing your quilt. So the first option I'm going to share is simple quilting with lines. And this is what I recommend most of the time. Simple quilting with lines is perfect if you want to finish your quilt by yourself on your domestic sewing machine. Simple quilting is a great option because it can be done quickly and easily. And there are a lot of different design options. The number one design option that I recommend for beginners is stitching with wavy lines. So you can see on this pink and green twinkle sampler quilt, my quilting lines are wavy lines. And the reason why wavy lines are a great choice is because if you're trying to get straight lines and then you have one or two wavy lines, they didn't get perfectly straight, they really stand out as a mistake. But if all your lines are wavy, then there's not really any mistakes in it. Nothing stands out. So wavy lines is a great choice, especially for a beginner. But if you have a bit more practice and confidence, straight lines are also a good option. On this quilt, you can see I quilted it with straight lines and it echoes the triangle design in the quilt. So it really supports that. Another fun, simple quilting with lines design is a spiral. And a spiral is just one long line that keeps going around and around out to the edge like a record. Spiral quilting is a really fun effect to put on your quilts, but it, especially if you have a very large quilt, it can take a long time to do. So if you want to try simple quilting with lines, then be sure to check the links below because I have a whole bunch of tutorials for different designs that use lines. The second option for finishing your quilts is a method called free motion quilting. And free motion quilting involves lowering the feed dogs on your machine and then manually moving your quilt in the machine so as the stitching is happening. And free motion can give you amazing, beautiful designs. On this, on this red and white nine patch sampler quilt, you can see I customized each block with its own quilting design. So free motion quilting is very versatile and it's very beautiful, but it does have a pretty steep learning curve. If you want to try free motion quilting and you've never done it before, then I recommend taking a class or a workshop and especially in person if you have that option, because then you can get a lot of instant feedback and a lot of great ideas from the instructor and from other people in the class. But even if you do take a class or workshop, be prepared to practice. The more you practice, the better at it you'll be. So I don't recommend tackling a large quilt if you've never tried this technique before, but once you practice and work up your skills, you'll be able to do a lot of amazing things with free motion quilting. The third option for finishing your quilts is hand quilting. 
And hand quilting is a beautiful traditional method that involves stitching by hand of the three layers together. Traditionally, women would have wanted very small stitches and they would have measured to the inch. But modern quilters also sometimes enjoy big stitch quilting with a chunky thread so that it also adds a lot of extra texture to the design. So if you're someone who enjoys hand sewing and wants to just relax and take your time with the project, hand quilting is a really good option. The fourth option is tying. And this is another traditional option and it involves holding the layers together, not with stitches, but with little knots. Commonly, it was done with little pieces of yarn that were put through the layers and then knotted. But I have a sample, and this is one I've done with tacking stitches on the sewing machine. So it's tied by sewing machine. Tying quilts often uses a high loft polyester batting, which is more fluffy and squishy. And so it gives a totally different look to a quilt. Some people really like this look that is not as flat as quilts that are really heavily quilted. And then the fifth way that you can finish your quilt is to pay somebody else to do it for you. There are a lot of people with long arm machines who do this as a business. They finish quilts for people. There are a lot of different long arm options. Some are edge to edge overall designs and some are very intricate custom quilting designs. So you can shop around and see what you're looking for. Of course, if you choose a more time consuming, labor intense custom design, you're gonna pay more than a simple edge to edge design. But talk to quilters in your area, get referrals and look for samples. A good long arm quilter is a great quilting partner to have. Some people only piece the tops and they never quilt their own piece. So these are the five most common methods, quilting with lines, free motion quilting, hand quilting, tying, and paying someone else to do it for you. Whichever method you choose, you can end up with a finished quilt project that you can be proud of. For more information about these quilt samples and the techniques that I use, you can click on the link below and for more quilting ideas, tips, and tutorials, be sure to check out evitastudio.com.